everybody this morning. Uh, this is a very exciting day at the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce, at the Regional Robotics Training Center for the City of Fayetteville, for Northwest Arkansas, and for the State of Arkansas. I'm Steve Clark. I'm the President of the Fayetteville Chamber. I want to welcome you to this facility. It's a one of a kind. There's nothing else like this in Arkansas anywhere. And as far as we know, there's nothing like this in the United States where a chamber and a community college came together with a manufacturer, an OEM, a uh, FANIC, uh, and then uh, partnered and collaborated to be able to create a robotics training facility which condenses the training time from right now most places uh, it's done in community colleges and it's a semester to a week. So we literally say to people, give us a week and we'll change your life. And these jobs that people will be able to get from taking this training and getting this certification on these very robots that you're looking at. So the students in here will train on those. They're not just for show, they're for teaching. Uh, but uh, in this instance, they'll be eligible for job in the range of thirty-eight dollars to $42,000 a year, and if they stay in that field, they can go up to approach a six-figure income. So we think this is a game changer in Arkansas. We think it's a game changer particularly for Northwest Arkansas. I said to our speakers today that the theme of this uh, event, and we're inside because we thought it was going to be raining, and so that's why we had to do all this, but uh, this is all about collaboration. Um, we would not be here today. The robots would not be here today. Uh, we would not be getting students today. And I've had some people here today said, we've got students to send you. Uh, we would not be doing any of those things if these leaders I'm about to introduce uh, hadn't had the patience and the vision and the uh, willingness, the uh, tenacity to stay with the project. Uh, this dream started at the chamber uh, in 2015 about workforce, not just about robotics, actually not specifically about robotics at the time, about ways that we could impact the workforce. And we started thinking about uh, interns and we started thinking about apprentices. And so we wound up with a program in our public schools called Leader and Me, which taught uh, really good work skills. Think first things first, begin with the end in mind. Somebody's phone's ringing, I guess it's mine. <laughs> Yes, we will take 10 students for the robotics class. Yes. Sorry about that. I'm embarrassed, I have to tell you. So um, we worked with students in uh, six of our nine elementary schools, and we kept thinking about other things. The Makers Movement took off, and we got involved in that. And below you is the Northwest Arkansas Fab Lab Digital Fabrication Laboratory. And then with that came this idea of creating a robotics training center and creating the 21st century skills for our employers here now and the 21st century skills for the employers we hope to recruit. Um, so I should first thank a couple of people. And the first people I want to thank are the members of the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce staff. And they're all here, or most of them are. Uh, they put up with a lot. Some of them painted, some of them cleaned floors. This was, uh, as the mayor said, he said, Steve, the last time I was in here, this was an art gallery and there are paintings of nude women. <laughs> he said, I like what you've done to the place. <laughs> so it was an art gallery at that time, and so without the Fayetteville Chamber staff, we wouldn't have been able to put this in place and make it work. Secondly, I want to introduce you to Josh Watson. Where's Josh? Right there. He's our director. I want to introduce you to Braden Wagstaff right there. Oh, your up. He's our very first intern. He's a valuable guy attending Brigham Young, uh, studying computer engineering, so we're delighted to have him. And so um, that's part of how this dream got to be true. The second part of this uh, goes to uh, the leadership of the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you're going to hear from our current board chair, but we go back to, like I say, about 2015. And the people who chaired our chamber would have been Tony Youth and Bill Bradley and Jim Smith and, and Scott Hancock. and. Um, there's a group of them, and some even before that, which would include uh, Donnie Story and some other folks. And so all of those folks said, you know, this is important. And probably 60 members over that four or five year window, because our board rotates membership, that were had a 
a part in making this all happen. So this is a vision of the community, not any one person. It's the vision of the community. And we're very proud of that vision. And Fayetteville likes to tell people that we like being first, and we are first at a lot of things. Well, we are absolutely first at this. We're absolutely first at providing um, robotics training on Main Street for people every day uh, who want to get these skills to participate in the changing world of the 21st century. We have uh, five speakers here today, and I'm going to introduce the first, and then they're just going to come in order so we don't have to keep me coming back. But uh, Craig Shy, the chairman of my board, is going to speak here in just a second. Uh, our mayor is going to speak here in just a second after Craig. After him will be Joe Willis, who's the executive director of the Northwest Arkansas Economic Development District. Uh, Tim Cornelius from Northwest Arkansas Community Foundation, Community College, excuse me and then from our Congressman Steve Wong. To tell you a little bit about these folks, I bragged on our chamber leadership. Let me brag on our mayor. When I started talking to our mayor about this, he said, I love people who get career skills. I love ways that we're going to teach people how to be a part of the 21st century. If he hadn't had that willingness, if he hadn't been you know, talking about something else, he hadn't been talking about other programs, uh, we wouldn't have gotten the success and the support and the encouragement that we got from the city. And I just saw someone walk in at the back. That's Monique Theory, she'll raise her hand. She's from the United States Chamber of Commerce, and she flew in to be here with us today to support us in our efforts. But go back to the mayor. The mayor said, Steve, I think this works. And so as we've gone through this process, he has always been there and never unfailing in his support. Joe Willis, when we started trying to figure out how we were gonna make this happen, uh, you know, you can do anything, you can dream anything, but if you don't have money, your dreams just kind of evaporate. And so we decided that we would take the approach to see if the Economic Development Administration of the United States government might be willing to support this to purchase the robots. Um, that's a long and tedious process. Believe me, uh, I think I'm a pretty good lawyer. I read till my eyes just got blurry trying to figure out the rules and the regs. And Joe Willis and Jeremy and his team, Jeremy Ragland, they had the patience to help walk us through it, help us to understand this, uh, to encourage us. And I should tell you, they're obviously in Harrison. They've been there 40 plus years. And many, many people think they only serve small communities. We're the third largest community in Arkansas, and they served us really, really well. And then it gets to um, Tim and NWAC. When this dream started taking shape about four years ago, uh, Tim Cornelius came and sat with me and said, I got this idea, what do you think? And I said, well, I think it's pretty good, but I don't know how we're gonna get there. And we kept talking and we kept working and I went to my board, he went to his leadership and said, this could be a game changer for Arkansas. Let's stay connected. And because of that, this collaboration that we've done is unequaled in the United States. And so at our community college, which has as a part of its mission, educating students, but also as a part of its mission, training students to be workers for the companies that need them, uh, this fits perfectly as we're giving training skills through uh, Northwest Arkansas Community College. It is a marriage made in heaven, and we've had a really good partner in the community college and in TM. And then last, you know, I was talking, all of us know Congressman Wong. We all like him. He's our buddy. He's our friend. We knew him when he was mayor. Um, you know, Rogers, and we've all worked with him. So I started talking to him about this, and, and he said, just tell me what you want me to do. I said, well, I just want you to tell people that it's okay to try, and it's okay to believe we can, and, and that if we need a little push or a little help, you'll give it to us. And without hesitation, not only did he do that, and he's done it, more than a half dozen times. When Sometimes I've been a little dejected because I wasn't sure we were going to get here. And he just said, no, I'm with you, buddy. So he said, here's my cell phone. Now you call me and I'll answer any time. So the first time I called, he was on the floor of the House of Representatives, which they're not supposed to take phone calls on the floor. Uh, he said, hold on, you know, <laughs> okay. You know, and he comes and says, what do you want? I'm here. And uh, so it's just been a, a wonderful partnership. I see one other person just came in, one of our city council members, newly elected, Sonia Gutierrez, and we're glad you're here today. She represents Ward 1. So let's get on to the people who have some things to say about what's happening here. So Craig Shy, the chairman of the 
Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce Board. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Um, as Steve said, my name is Craig Shy. I'm the current chair of the, of the Fayetteville Chamber Board of Directors. Uh, I'm here to, to welcome you on behalf of the Board of Directors and on behalf of the, um, the business community in Fayetteville. Um, I know I see a couple of board members. If you are a current or a, or a board member from the last three or four years, would you please just kind of wave at us? I know I've seen a few here, Daniel Barnes and Rich Davis back there in the back. Um, appreciate you guys being here today. Um, I served on the, on the board of the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce back in, uh, in 2003 through 2009 the first time, uh, and then kind of stepped away for a while, and then returned to the board in, in 2017. And really what I found in 2017 is that the chamber had really changed in some very innovative and progressive ways. Uh, the chamber has always been really good at what chambers do. Uh, economic development, uh, membership services, networking, advocates, advocacy, uh, and leadership programs are, have been some real strengths of the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce over the years. Uh, but I noticed that there were some things that were new, and, and those things really included some innovative programs to promote work, uh, workforce development for the benefit of our citizens and for our employers here in Fayetteville. Um, these programs were really designed to create opportunities uh, for people to gain new skills, uh, new technical and soft skills, um, in, in really an ever-changing job market. And those skills would include like you know, coding, um, automation and robotics are big parts of that, uh, with a focus on, on really making the acquisition of those new skills fun, fulfilling, and rewarding. Um, those are all really good goals and, and really innovative things for a chamber to do. So as I stepped back in, I was really impressed. And as I've learned more and more uh, through this process, um, and continue to be impressed. So in, in August of 2016, before I returned to the, to the board, uh, the chamber opened the Fab Lab, um, and it's located, as Steve said, on the garden level just below you here. Um, and it is, uh, it was really uh, created, and what it did is create a maker space where program participants could uh, conceptualize, design, develop, uh, and fabricate and test pretty much anything they wanted to. And most of the participants are young people in those programs, and, and what they do in those prog programs is develop skills necessary to promote lifelong learning and the skills really needed uh, to embrace change. And as we all know, embracing change is important in today's environment. So around the same time, the Chamber um, and the Northwest Arkansas Community College started working together, agreed to work together to create the Northwest Arkansas Regional Robotics Training Center, uh, which you see today. Um, you know, after three years of hard work and persistence, um, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're standing in this space today and you can see the robots around you and, and we're celebrating um, a, a grand opening here. Um, so the, the robotic center leases space that is here in the chamber's building. Uh, the chamber um, worked with the Northern Arkansas Economic Development District uh, to receive a $336,000 uh, federal economic development grant that funded the purchase of these robots, and, and without the robots, this program would not be possible. Um, Northwest Arkansas Community College offers the robotics training course on their website as a non-credit uh, as non-credit instruction, and then the re regional uh, training center will train individuals on these FANUC machines. Um, uh, they're commercial robots. Uh, it's a 32-hour training course over one week. Um, and the FANUC ro uh, robot is the most widely used robot for commercial applications um, uh, I I here in the United States. Um, we can train up to 12 students per week, uh, and upon completion, as Steve said earlier, the student will become FANUC certified robotics te technician uh, and can qualify for a job uh, that earns $40,000 a year and up uh, with some of our local employers that are, uh, that are very anxious to have trained, uh, trained associates ready to go. So, so we've all moved forward by embracing change. That's a philosophy that's a big part of the chamber and a big part of what brings us here today. Um, so I'd like to thank a few folks as well. I'm thankful for, for Steve Clark and his team at the chamber um, for um, the innovation, for leadership uh, that they've, uh, and the persistence that they've uh, carried on throughout this process. Through, uh, I'd like to thank the city of Fayetteville for its support and recognition uh, of the need for quality workforce development. I'd like to thank North Arkansas Community College 
for its willingness to collaborate with the chamber. Um, sorry, on to my second page. Almost done. Uh, and then also the Northwest Arkansas Economic Development District for its expertise and assistance in securing the EDA funding. Again, without that funding, we would not have the machines and the program would not be possible. And then uh, also to Congressman Walmack for his support in all, all of these efforts and also for his representation of our communities and our citizens. So today would really not have been possible without a collaboration of effort with all these organizations and individuals and I thank all those. So with that, I will turn it over to Mayor, Mayor Lionel Jordan. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a great day in the city of Federal, right? Right. Right? All right. I want to welcome everyone. Uh, what an incredible day for workforce and economic development in our great city. First, I want to thank Congressman Womack for all his support over the years for this city. Thank you, Congressman Womack. Thank you very much. I want to thank Steve Clark, the Chamber President, for making this incredible asset possible and the Chamber of Commerce team and their board of directors for their efforts in bringing this facility to reality. Yay? Yes? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I want to give a huge thank you to the Economic Development Administration and the Department of Commerce for their support in making this possible. I also want to thank Tim Cornelius and the Northwest Arkansas Community College for, for partnering with this initiative and for being here today. I want to thank Joe Willis, Executive Director of the Northwest Arkansas Economic Development District for helping to secure the grant funding for this facility. The Northwest Arkansas Regional Robotics Center will be a pillar for our workforce development efforts in federal. It's initiatives such as this that enable us to not simply hope our residents, our children are prepared for the jobs of the future. They are ensuring they are prepared. I want you to know I, 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 I deeply care about making sure our residents can obtain a fulfilling career at a decent living wage. That's why we continue to make strategic investments in economic development, why the city is crafting a workforce development plan, and why question six of our recently passed bond has an emphasis on job, skill, training. This city will be investing at least $1.5 billion in workforce training in the next few years. So Steve, I want to thank you again for your leadership, your foresight for this project. This is a game changer for this city. The city's economy is growing at a rate of, my friends, a business a day in this city. We've had 39 new businesses open in the past 30 days. And we will ensure our current businesses and our future businesses have the access to the skilled and trained workforce they need to thrive here in this city. So as I close today, I want to leave you with this. We know in this city that anything is possible through patience, perseverance, and passion. We take those things that are in the area of where the dreams are, and in this city, we bring them into reality. We are willing to do today the things that other cities won't do to have tomorrow the things other cities won't have because we're willing to pay that price and to make those dreams come true because today we live in the reality of the dreams of the past and the, and the, the dreams that we dream today will be the future, will be the reality of the future. So this city lives from dream to dream. Today we fulfill one of those dreams. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mayor. I wish you were more passionate and excited about this, uh, about this project. Uh, how do you follow that, Steve? I'm going to make Tim Cornelius look really good. Yeah, yeah, amen, amen.
So I'm Joe Willis, Executive Director of the Northwest Arkansas Economic Development District. And I'm uh, thrilled to be here. Jeremy Ragland's here with me. He's our Deputy Director, and I've got to give him some great kudos because he's he really has been the workhorse behind this whole uh, this whole effort. In the spring of 2016, Steve called and asked if he could come over and visit with us about it, and uh, we were we were more than happy to, to receive him and have that conversation. And when he made his pitch, I mean, it's kind of like you had me from hello. It was uh, it was great. We we were all on board. And interestingly enough, we were just a few days away from traveling to D.C. to meet with representatives of EDA. And so we said, we want to take this and have this conversation. And we did, and they were immediately on board as well. And, we, and the challenge that we faced uh, right off the bat was the fact that there was a pool of funds that they had available, but there was a very, very short window to make that application and get that on board. And we had about a week. So uh, as, as uh, Steve said, there's very little brevity about anything when you deal with... Uh, with any government agency in particular, but EDA and their application process sometimes is, is a, a little bit challenging. So we did. We, we got on it and uh, had a lot of late night conversations. Steve did a lot of after hours work and we'd get emails from you at midnight or somewhere there close to it. And in a week got this thing submitted and uh, since then it's gone through several iterations and, and uh, Steve I know you've had your challenges on uh, location and it's required some adjustments here, there and yon. But, uh, but uh, I got to give the guy credit. He has stuck with it, and I know at times you've gotten discouraged. And, uh, and but we were happy to play what small role that we had in it. Uh, we we were just thrilled to have a chance to put put this in front of the Economic Development Administration, fit right down their alley, and they were more than happy to get involved. I, I do have to say thanks to, to Congressman Womack. Um, there have been numerous attempts over the years to to just completely eliminate EDA. It appears to be from some thinking at the congressional level uh, that that agency is not as effective as it should be. So in 17, actually, spring of 17, I was in D.C., and, and that's when that first real shot across the bow to eliminate EDA was out. And I met with Congressman Womack, and I was concerned about it because I know the impact that they have, things like this here. It's, it's, uh, you just couldn't get that from another federal agency. And Congressman Womack said, hey, don't worry. We in Congress, we know how, how effective EDA is, and, and that agency has a lot of friends on both sides of the aisle, and I don't think you need to have a great deal of concern about it being eliminated. And in fact, we saw ultimately they've got a little bit of increase in funding, and they continue to do great work. So I want to be a spokesman for EDA, the Department of Commerce. They do really good things, and, uh, and Congressman Womack, you, you and your affiliates and your associates have, uh, have really helped make sure that that stays on task. So I'm the only one up here that doesn't have any notes, so that hopefully speaks to the brevity of my comments. And uh, I just, I do want to say thanks to all of these guys. I know all the names have been mentioned, and uh, it really couldn't have happened without everybody. And uh, we're just happy to have played a small part. Thank you very much. I'm Tim Cornelius. I'm the Vice President of Career Workforce Education at Northwest Arkansas Community College. And I remarked to the mayor, there's actually a photo of a robot over here with no clothes on it. So it's actually it, there are no clothes. Uh, I do have notes, Joe, but I'm at 28 points height now. Okay. Uh, but this is a great day for not just Northwest Arkansas, but Arkansas and the region. What you're witnessing today is what a couple of authors, uh, W. Chan Kim and Renee Borgen, refer to as non-disruptive creation. And this is contrasted with what's called disruptive innovation. You don't have to create something by destroying something. Non-disruptive creation expands the definition of what innovation means. Kim and Morborgan noted three ways to pursue innovation. I'll tie these actually in together. We're offering a breakthrough solution to an existing problem. That's what you're in. You are now in the midst of a breakthrough solution to an existing problem. The Regional Robotics Training Center accomplishes this by establishing the first robotics training center in Arkansas. Second. Identify and solve a brand new problem or seize a brand opportunity through this. Through this, we, through collaboration, um, I laugh sometimes and I, people say, how long have you been working on it? I say, well, my hair was dark and curly at the time, but not <laughs> quite true. But, but this is a collaboration and we seize this new opportunity to provide training for companies that have purchased FANUC robots reskilling people for new career opportunities and we will do this eventually for high school students. Number three, redefine an existing industry problem and solve that redefined problem. Problem is there's no training center. 
So this is solved is because now there's easily accessible training for companies in our area that have bought FANUC robots and for companies that might be interested, Mr. Mayor, in coming to this area that are going to use robotics. We are ready for them. We're unlocking a brand new opportunity. So when the door was unlocked officially this morning, that's a brand new opportunity we unlocked. To the best of my knowledge, the Fayetteville Chamber is the only chamber in the U.S. with a Fab Lab. And I've been working with Fab Labs for many years. And now, I get, this could be a Guinness Book of World Records something. <laughs> the only chamber with a robotics training center that can award certificates through the community college. Steve Guest, Northwest Arkansas Community College is honored to be a part of this new chapter in non-disruptive creation in Arkansas and a part of the innovation ecosystem, not only in Northwest Arkansas, but in Arkansas as well. Thank you, Steve, for working with us, and thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, good morning, all. When I came in today and saw these robots, the first thing that came to my mind was wow, this is highly technical, this is complicated, this is difficult. And then I walked over here and looked at these diplomas on the wall and I saw one that said Steve Clark and I thought, it can't be that bad. Um, you know, forget my prepared remarks here for just a minute, I, I, I want to talk briefly about Fayetteville. The confluence of people, organizations that cooperate together, work together for the community good is, I think, an example uh, for the rest of the country. You know, you've had people come up here and speak today like your mayor, the right reverend Lionel Jordan. <laughs> who speaks with a lot of passion, got great ideas, and successfully led this city through a, a major bond issue uh, just a few weeks ago. 10 for 10 on the questions uh, that were asked. You don't see that very often, and you certainly don't see it where there is not a as I say, a confluence of leadership going on within the community, so you should be proud of that. Your Chamber of Commerce, uh, Steve Clark and his entire team, doing remarkable work, kind of getting outside the box, so to speak, and thinking about what is it that we could be doing and leading that can bring attention to the greater Northwest Arkansas area as if we hadn't already had a lot of attention. And here is yet another example where we can be the first or the only, that we, we, we hear those words a lot about activities going on up here, that we are on the cutting edge of technology and job creation in the greater Northwest Arkansas area. And then I see young people, I met these two kids from Elkins and one from Lincoln uh, that are uh, involved in this kind of work. These are the kids of the future that know that this is the future of, uh, of that next round of of economic development activity that's going to go on up here. It's going to be heavily robotic, as, as it already is. Uh, so I am, you know, when I come up here to participate in this event, it's one thing to talk about STEM technology and all of the latest, greatest, highly technical things that are going on that we're leading on. But at the end of the day, it's really about a community that works together, comes together, and recognizes that if we're going to be successful, we've got to lock arms and we've got to do this together. So you got great partnerships at work here. Partnerships between the chamber and education, and education and government, and healthcare and government, and healthcare and the rest of the community. And it's just a, a, just a really, really refreshing feeling for me to stand here today as a representative from the region that boasts of so many things that are innovative, cutting edge, and leading in the area of economic development. So I'm, I'm here to congratulate you for that. I wish that my colleagues could see what a small piece of federal spending is doing to create jobs and opportunity for people. 
Now, when you walked in here today, the first thing on your mind was probably not uh, the entitlement structure of our country and how uh, we read all the time about how uh, trust funds for Medicare and Social Security are beginning to run dry. There's a simple reason for that. It's because we have fewer and fewer people in the job force today, two and a half people working for every beneficiary of these programs as opposed to in its heyday when there were 25 or 30 workers for every beneficiary. When I walked in here today and I see these robots, I think about those that social safety net program and I recognize that the more of this we do, the more people we're going to put into the workforce at higher income levels that can do nothing but improve the balance sheets of these social safety net programs that are critical to the future of so many vulnerable Americans. So I, I am just thrilled today to see that a little over $300,000 of taxpayers' money spent through the Economic Development Administration purposed in helping give these kids from Elkins and Lincoln and many, many others an opportunity to really get a head start and not incur a lot of that student debt that we see today at a, at a trillion and a half dollars uh, that is that next real big bubble to burst. And by the way, a third of that debt is held by people who never finished their degree program. So to know that we have a small piece of the federal pie here today that's providing opportunities for these young people, I think send, sends uh, a great message throughout the country uh, that not all spending is bad, and some of the spending can, in fact, uh, have a multiplying effect on the overall economic well-being of our area. So today, congratulations, City of Fayetteville. Congratulations to the Chamber of Commerce. Thanks to my friend Joe Willis and the people at uh, the Northwest Arkansas Economic Development Agency. Our thanks to anybody that had anything to do with making this dream come true possible for a lot of people. And uh, very, very proud to call it part of our third district of Arkansas. God bless you and thanks for allowing me the opportunity to join with you in this celebration today. Before we adjourn, there's a couple people I missed. So one is Dr. Charles Cudney, who's back there. If you wait, Charles. He heads our Northwest Arkansas Educational Services Co-op. So that's all of the school districts in Benton and Washington and Madison County. Uh, they have been an earnest supporter of all the things we've done for innovation, entrepreneurship, the Fab Labs, this project, uh, bringing to the table those professor, professors, those teachers, those principals, those superintendents to say we want to make sure that we're equipping our students with the skills of the 21st century. Our new state representative who is, uh, she's a bulldog, I'm telling you, uh, she gets after it and I appreciate it very much in representing Fable. Nicole Clowney, which was here somewhere, she, she just had to leave, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, and then another one of our board members, Van Comer is here. So Van, would you wait? So I'll end by saying many times y'all have heard me speak and I say I cannot guarantee you that living in Fayetteville is going to add years to your life. But I can absolutely guarantee you that living in Fayetteville is going to add life to your years. That's what this is all about. Thank you for helping make it possible. Uh, it's a grand and glorious day at the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce in the city of Fayetteville, the region of Northwest Arkansas, and the great state of Arkansas. God bless you all. Thank you.